Now the Sony FX30 does have one unique ability for a camera and its price point, and that's the ability to actually record in RAW externally, but it still records in ProRes RAW via the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder. And in today's video, we're not necessarily going to talk about how to get to the RAW features, it's actually pretty easy, but we are going to go through a color grading workflow that you can use on DaVinci Resolve using the Sony FX30 footage. But let's convert and actually import this into DaVinci Resolve and start our color grading. So we have our ProRes RAW file in DaVinci Resolve. Now I did convert this into a Cinema DNG file through a RAW recorder app, which I've mentioned a couple times on the channel. But if you want to check that out, there's other videos I could show you on there. But I do want to break this down in terms of how I would color grade this type of footage. Now, as you can see, I already have my note tree set up with nine nodes. Now, the first node is going to be our noise reduction. Our second one is going to be our color space transform, a black point node that we'll use a little bit at the end, something for our skin. There's also trees in the background as well that we're going to adjust. And I also want to change the overall color, but because the walls are white, I call this the wall node. Now, I do use LUTs to edit my footage, and I do use my own pack in order to dial in my grades, something you guys can check out a little bit later. And then I also use the effects grain and glow to really dial in my image in this warm kind of film look that we're going to go for. Okay, so you probably noticed that this footage right in DaVinci Resolve looks a little bit weird. And it, because all the highlights look blown out and the colors are kind of off, you might think that you've actually done something wrong. But what we're going to actually do is we're going to change the color space and change some of the raw settings in this clip in order to make it look a little bit more normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into our raw controls, which is going to be right here in Camera Raw, go to our decode project and go to clip. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to change our color space into P3D.60 and you're going to change your gamma to linear. Now that actually probably looks a little bit worse, but we're going to transform this color into a color space that looks a little bit more like a S log or a C log or something you might be used to. Now we're going to go to our CST node, we're going to go to our effects and I'm going to type in color space transform. Once I've actually done this, I'm actually going to transfer this into an S log three type of workflow. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go in my input color space and the color space is P360 or P3D60, sorry. And I'm going to change this to linear. And this is going to be my intake in terms of my color grading. Got to find linear here. And that's going to be linear. Still looks a little bit weird, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to change this S gamut 3 cine and then into S log 3. Now, if you notice that this still looks a little bit weird, we're going to change our tone mapping method from DaVinci into none and now you're going to see that that does look kind of like it would be if you shot this in a native s log tone and then what i'm going to do is go over to my lut node and i'm going to add in one of the luts from my pack you could check those out in the description but we're going to keep it moving and this is what it looks like when i transfer from the p3d60 linear into an s log 3 space and then i use one of the luts that are on there now the luts applied and ready to start grading i'm going to go into my camera raw settings to start to adjust the image now, right off the bat, I'm actually going to want to go for a little bit more contrast and actually bring my exposure down a little bit. So we're going to go over into our camera raw tab and I'm going to start to move that back a bit. So that's a little bit darker. It makes it look a little bit more realistic and we can start to bring up other things because we're working in a raw space. So bear with me as I, I kind of go through this. Now I am going to go for a little bit more of a more neutral look in terms of my white balance. So I'm going to take my color temperature back a little bit here makes the most amount of sense to me. And then we're actually going to start to bring up our highlights because as we brought our exposure down, we brought everything down by quite a bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on my waveform as well to make sure that nothing is clipping and I'm avoiding some of those flat lines you might get while you're making these adjustments. Now this is going to start to flatten out a little bit and that's going to come from the light coming out of the window, but you're actually going to still see some dynamic range back into here as that's a brick wall. We're going to see some of that detail when we really start to dial in this grade and finish up. Now my shadows, I'm gonna lift by just a touch because it is a bit darker. And then this does look a little bit desaturated to me. So I'm gonna raise this up to maybe like 15. And that starts to look pretty good. Now everything does look pretty good, but I will say that the Sony FX30 does have a pretty sharp sensor because it's a downsampled image, things are gonna look a little bit too crispy and a little bit too sharp sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to my sharpness and instead of going up, I'm actually gonna take this in half in order to give it a more natural or cinematic look if that's what you wanna call it. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start to qualify and start to edit some of our skin tones. And we're gonna go to our skin node over here and I'm actually gonna use this eyedropper because we're working in ProRes RAW, you're gonna have a lot of color space to work with. 
with. So getting a decent selection is gonna be a little bit easier when working with a 12-bit space rather than using something that's 10-bit. Now I'm just gonna hover right over here. I'm gonna click onto there and I can press Shift H in order to see some of those skin tones. Now I'm in the qualifier tab on my HSL right over here. And you're gonna notice that it does grab a lot of information. And that's because my selection is a little bit too wide over here. So what I have to do is actually start to shrink and move this around. So I'm gonna move this more onto the orange side as that's where skin tones usually are. And I'm gonna start to shrink this down. I'm also gonna play with my saturation and my luminance just to see if I can get a little bit more qualification. And it seems like that's gonna be pretty much as good as I'm going to get for the selection. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my features of clean black and white to really see if I can narrow things down to see if I can get more skin and exclude anything else in the frame. That's still looking pretty decent, but I mean, if you full screen this, you're gonna actually see little specs that are in here. So I'm gonna go over to my matte finesse and I'm gonna go to number two and I'm gonna to start to turn on a denoiser. That's gonna get some of the specs out of there, at least make it a little bit more smooth just in case. And then I could actually go into my waveform. I'm gonna change this to my vector scope. And what you're gonna see here is that you're gonna see this nice flush line around this round circle. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna change my skin tone selection that's up here to get this line to move over here. Now, you could do this in more than one way, and I think the simple way for me to do this for this video is I'm gonna to go to my color wheels, my primaries, I'm gonna to go to my hue, and I'm just gonna bring this back a little bit till it's a little bit closer to where I need it to be. Then all I have to do is press Shift H, and that's gonna be more of an accurate skin tone grab. Okay, so now we're gonna move from our skin onto other areas inside of our image. Now I do wanna dial in a more warm filmic look, so I want every element to reflect that. Now these tree leaves back here, now they are green, but they kinda of lean a little bit over into the blues a bit. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make these greens a little bit more on the yellow side to try to reflect the warmer look. And then I'm going to actually use my color warper, which is gonna be right up on here. It looks like a spider web. Now I'm gonna go over to 12 to get a little bit more flexibility or be a little bit more granular in terms of how I wanna adjust the colors. But obviously these leaves are going to be green. So instead of actually using the eyedropper here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select a range here. Now you could open and you could close this range however you'd like to, and you're gonna see that it has some indicating bars on it here that you're gonna move everything in unison. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna go over here to my hue, and you could actually move this forwards or backwards. If you pay attention to the tree, if I go way too far up, my tree's almost red. If I go back the other way, well, it's actually leaning more into those blues and it's almost getting into a teal look. Clearly, I don't want it to be more teal or more blue. I want it to reflect more of the warmer style I'm going for. So I'm gonna go in the other direction and start to move these a little bit higher to bring out some of the yellow parts of that teal hue. Now, because the leaves are fairly bright, I don't want them to overpower the image too much. And when we start to really dial in the warmth overall look, I want them to look more subtle and I don't want them to jump out at your face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the saturation and only a little bit am I going to bring this back. Just a couple points, just to fade it out a little bit because when we're gonna go to our last note to bring on our overall look, I want everything to look like it makes sense. So basically what we want to do is we want to bring in some warmth and generally warm colors are going to be your yellows, your reds, and your oranges. Now we already have oranges in our skin tones on the skin and we also have it on the hardwood floor. And I don't necessarily want to bring reds into here, but I want to bring more of a yellow or orange warmer tone to bring things in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my primaries in here. Now, knowing that the gain is going to deal with some of the lighter parts of my image, that's where I'm going to start to make adjustments in the colors to bring in my overall look. Now, if you're looking at the primaries, you're only gonna see your red, green, and your blue. But just know that the opposite of red is going to be cyan. So if I go negative on the red or I go less red, then there's gonna be more cyan there. If I'm going to my green, if I go less green, it's gonna bring in more magenta, which is the opposite of green on the color wheel. And if I do blue, well, it's gonna bring in more yellow. That's actually where we're going to start. We're actually gonna take away some of the blue to bring in some yellow tones here. That might be a fine place to kind of park things and leave it, but I do find that it's a little bit on the green side and it doesn't look as good as it can be. So I'm actually gonna bring some of these greens back and then I'm gonna play around with some of the reds as well to start to bring in that look. Now you will have to dance around with this just a little bit in order to get things the way that you want it to. But basically what I wanna do is make sure that this wall at the back has more of a yellowish tone to it that's still warm without it looking like it's the matrix. Now it's not a gigantic departure from when it started, but if I do a before and after, that's what it looks like after, and that's what it looks like before. This is pretty neutral, it's pretty sterile, 
but for this it kind of has a better look to it but all the tones seem to match and look a little bit more cohesive so this is after before after before now i did call this node b point and that was going to stand for black point however when we're talking about curves it's not the most accurate way to call it actually the black point is going to be down here but the adjustment I'm going to make is actually going to be somewhere over here. All I'm doing is I'm just really getting specific in terms of where that little dark point is or where the darkest part of my darks are going to be. Now, when I'm looking at my scopes here, we're just above zero. And sometimes what I like to do is I go down into here and I start to bring that down a little bit just until it gets to the point where it's just before it's clipping. Now, this is a really small step and something that I like doing, but it just sort of adds a little bit more darkness. It gives a little bit more depth into the images, especially around the shadow areas. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to some of our visual effects to start to dial in the quote unquote film look. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our grain and our glow tools. Now I'm gonna actually do glow first and I'm gonna go over to my effects. And all I have to do is go in the search bar, type in glow, and then you're gonna notice that things look, look weird. Um, basically what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna go into our composite type and instead of add, we're going to use soft light. Now you're gonna notice that things are going to get a little bit darker. And when you go up to the shine threshold here, what you're actually going to do is you're gonna drag this back a little bit to bring in some of that light. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring some glow into the image. And by doing that, it's gonna kind of give it a more lifted look, give it a little bit more of that kind of filmic cinematic look. And that's how I'm gonna use this glow tool. Now you can play this to taste. If you go too far, looks a little bit weird, looks kind of like a soap opera. But if you go too far, then it's dark and you kind of don't really get much anyways. So I'm gonna put this somewhere in the middle, maybe right about here. I don't necessarily want these blacks to be overdone and over faded. So if I go too far up, that's way too much and it's gonna look weird. So I'm just gonna go right back here and drag this back a little bit. Now this is with it on full on, a full stop with absolutely no blending in it. So I'm gonna go to my global blend here and mix that in a little bit because I do want it to be subtle, but I still want that effect to be there. Now I'm just gonna close this down and this is what it looks like before and that's after. Before, after. And last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into some film grain. Now I'm not a gigantic person, I'm not a gigantic fan of film grain, but I do like adding it a little bit just to give the image a little bit more texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to grain, not grid, or grin, drag and drop that into here. And there's already a couple presets that are on DaVinci Resolve. So if you're new to this, there's also tons of presets that you can use in order to dial in your image. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use 35 millimeter grain. I don't need the opacity to be extremely high. However, if I go all the way up, it's, it's gonna look pretty grainy. But if I go all the way back, it almost looks like there's nothing there. So I am going to leave this right around in the middle. Now I do want to add some texture. I do want to have a little bit of film grain in there, make it look like it was by accident or make it look natural. So I'm going to bring my texture up a little bit, but I'm also going to bring my grain size down. But because I do still want some stuff in my image, I am going to take the strength just a little bit higher up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my waveform and I'm just going to toggle this node on and off to see on my scopes how much it actually adds into my image. Now, if you do want to see things in full screen, you could select P and you'll be able to see things as you turn nodes on and off in order to kind of get an idea of what things are going to look like. But however, this looks like a pretty good image and all I have to do is one more adjustment and we're almost ready to go. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna go into our noise reduction. Now, when you're working with raw footage, sometimes you actually don't have built-in noise reduction and that's not a necessarily a bad thing. Noise reduction sometimes degrades footage and it's also in place in a lot of mirrorless cameras and it happens automatically and you have very little control over it. But when I'm working with this ProRes raw footage that's raw from the sensor, I'm actually gonna dial in a little bit of noise reduction just to bring things in. Now, if I actually zoom into about 50% or 75% here, when I zoom in, there's actually not a lot of noise going on, and that's typically because my image is going to be a little bit brighter. However, we're gonna click on our noise reduction node, we're gonna go over to the noise reduction tab, but what we're going to do is adjust our noise reduction in order to get things to really dial in just in case there's a little bit of unwanted grain. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for my motion estimation type to go faster to better. This is also gonna be processor intensive, so you wanna leave this to last, and honestly, sometimes I actually turn this node off so it doesn't slow down my process. But I wanna make sure that both these are set on a better to get the best noise reduction possible and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to move this up and periodically check to make sure that areas that here these areas that are dark are going to be a little bit more smoother and not have a lot of grain in it now truthfully because there's not a lot of noise in this image in general i actually didn't apply a lot of noise reduction here but what you want to do is you want to toggle between these noise reduction settings just to make sure that the areas where it's dark don't actually have a lot of grain in it 
However, this is what our image is going to look like. However, this is what our image is going to look like when everything is color graded. That being said, this was just a quick video on how to color grade ProRes raw footage. Now I know we only did use one clip, I wanted to keep the video more condensed, but if you have different situations where you kind of want to know color grading workflow, leave a comment down below because I can go and get some test footage and we can go through some of those at a later time. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least you learned something and if you want to see more videos, you know where to find it. Alright, I'm out of here. Peace.